Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex or Nuznuz, and today's video is going to be a video talking about gear upgrades and how to increase your DPS by making certain gear upgrades. Now, a lot of people don't know the true order of upgrades and what to buy and how to get the most out of their money. So I'm going to try to tackle the topic of what items to buy when looking to increase your DPS and what items to stay away from. There are a lot of common misconceptions about gear and what gear increases your DPS and will help you take down that boss faster. I'm here to try to show you some stats and show you some ways to increase your DPS and help you buy the right upgrade and not the wrong one. Some of you ha may have all these items and perks already and that's okay. This is meant to bring light how some of the most expensive upgrades in the game actually bring a minuscule DPS boost and maybe help you save some money and put you on the right path to getting the right gear upgrade depending on your needs. So the first upgrade we're going to get into is the Limitless Sigil. Now this is an item that is made by combining 2000 Vital Sparks together and it unlocks the Limitless ability. What this ability does is when activated, the player is able to use threshold abilities without needing to have 50% adrenaline for 6 seconds. This has a 90 second cooldown. This ability is super good and will increase your DPS almost everywhere as you can constantly use it with no charge once unlocked. This is great for bosses like Solok, Telos, and Brago that require big damage checks. Things like Ambassador as well, and basically anywhere that you go, this sigil will give you an advantage. Now if you notice in the thumbnail, a big misconception people have is to upgrade their armor very fast, like going from Virtus to Tectonic. The truth is, going from tier 80 to tier 90 armor is only a 0.75% DPS increase. With how expensive Tectonic is, and seeing how it degrades to dust, this is honestly such a minuscule DPS increase that I don't recommend upgrading to tier 90 power armor until you have a lot of the items I talk about today out of the way. If you don't have a limitless sigil and are looking for a way to increase your DPS, it's a very solid choice, and as of now it'll cost you around 280 to 300 mil to get it, but like I said, once you have it unlocked, you have it forever, and you can use it basically everywhere, so it's a really solid choice compared to something like buying Tectonic. Okay, so next we're going to be looking at two staffs, the Inquisitor Staff and the Staff of Sliske. Now at first glance, the Staff of Sliske is much more expensive sitting at 800 million GP, and is a tier 92 weapon. You would assume if you're looking to upgrade your magic setup from something like a Noxious Staff or below, you would go with the Staff of Sliske. But if we look at something like the Inquisitor Staff, sitting much cheaper at 330 mil, it's a tier 80 magic weapon at first glance, but the thing that makes the Inquisitor Staff different is it will turn into a tier 97 staff against melee class bosses, which is absolutely insanely overpowered and much better than the tier 92 Staff of Sliske. And the bosses his work on are most notably Solok, Telos, Next Angel of Death, Hellware, Vindicta, all three God Wars bosses except Kriara, KBD, QBD, Giant Mole, and a bunch more. Now this is going to bring me into another point about increasing your DPS, which is to upgrade based on what bosses you do. If you never do Telos or Solak or Vindicta or Hellwear, Inquisitor Staff probably isn't the best choice being as it's only good for a certain type of boss, but if you're someone who does a lot or all the bosses I just mentioned, the Inquisitor Staff is a great choice. And you can always use the Inquisitor Staff at all these bosses and then keep using your Noxious Staff for bosses that the Inquisitor doesn't work on. It's a much better way to spend your money than buying the Staff of Sosuke in my opinion. If you buy the Inquisitor Staff and keep your Noxious Staff or buy both, that's about 450 mil. You can use the Inquisitor Staff to get a huge damage boost at all the bosses it works on. And then you can use your Noxious Staff at all other bosses that the Inquisitor will not work on, and you won't really be missing out on a ton by not having the Staff of Sliske. I believe this is a must-have weapon for any PVMers that are using magic and getting into group bosses or want to start things like Telos, um, Solok, stuff like that. And I mean, it's good at a lot of other places like God Wars 1 and God Wars 2, so I think it's an all-around great choice. 
All right, so next we're going to talk about an upgrade that has to deal with invention perks. And I'm sure a lot of people already have these, but if you don't, you are sorely missing out on a huge DPS increase. This is the Precise 6 Equilibrium 4 perk combination on your weapons from Ancient Invention. Precise is an invention perk that increases the minimum hit of abilities and auto attacks by a percentage of its max hit. Equilibrium is an invention perk that will increase mi minimum hit, but also lowers maximum hit. Combined, these perks are very powerful and also are dirt cheap. They require historic components and time-worn components, and will probably cost you a total of only 2 to 3 million GP to get both. Now, having these two perks on your weapons will increase your DPS by 7% percent compared to having no perks yes you heard me right seven percent you would be surprised how many times i examine someone in game and see they have something like a noxious staff or a wyvern crossbow and it's not augmented which means they have no perks on it perking out your weapons is one of the most important things to do for increasing your dps the dps increase you will get from getting Precise 6 Equilibrium 4 compared to upgrading from a tier 90 to tier 92 weapon is almost non-comparable. 7% DPS crease for only 3 million GP is an absolute steal. And if you haven't perked out your weapons with Ancient Invention perks, I highly, highly recommend you do so. Now we are going to look at another way you can increase your DPS, most notably using ranged. And this is just something that I have to highly recommend everyone do if they're ranging. And I know a lot of people do not do this or don't know about it. And I have seen many people at Nex and other places without these. So use ranged weapons that can use criminal bolts. But criminal bolts are far superior to using a bow and arrows, even at the highest tier. I know there might have actually been other videos talking about why the Noxious Longbow isn't worth it anymore or why Bacrinal Bolts are so good, but even higher than that, things like Ascension Crossbows, which are about 400 mil for the set, are more DPS with Bacrinal Bolts than using a 1.5 billion GP Saren Godbow. Most people looking to get into range might go and buy a high tier bow like the Decimation, Noxious Longbow, or even a Saren Godbow, when in fact something like Ascensions or Wyvern Crossbow using Bacriminal Bolts will get you much more DPS at most places. Bacriminal Bolts are bolts fletched from the Bloodwood Tree and tipped with different types of enchanted bolt tips and have different effects. Most notably, bolts like the Ruby Bacriminal Bolts E have a 5% chance of triggering the Blood Forfeit effect which hits the target for 20% of their life points. This will allow you to hit huge 10k hits all the time and is super overpowered for almost every boss. People often ask me how I hit so high when I'm killing something like Raksha, Araxor, and bosses like that, and Ruby Bacriminal Bolts are often the main reason. They are extremely overpowered. There's also more expensive things like the Hydrix Bacriminal Bolts E, which have a 10% chance of triggering the Deathmark effect, which grants the player 10% adrenaline, which is absolutely huge for gaining more adrenaline to DPS faster at certain bosses. Finally, for a more cheap option, Dragonstone Bacriminal Bolts E are more affordable and have a 5% chance of triggering the Dragon's Breath effect, which hits the target a second time for 25% of your current attack as Dragonfire. If you're getting into ranged, I highly recommend getting a crossbow that can use Procriminal Bolts, even if it's a lower tier than what you could buy with your money. You will save much more money and do more DPS than if you had bought a more expensive bow. Not using Bacriminal Bolts is one of the biggest mistakes I see people who are using ranged do. They are just that good and I highly recommend using them. Finally, as the last upgrade, we are going to be talking about Archaeology Relics. Now obviously you are going to need to have Archaeology leveled up a bit, 
And for these relics, there are two that make up the best DPS increase possible. The first being the Berserker's Fury Archaeology Relic, which only requires level 56 archaeology. And, and once harnessed, players will deal up to 5.5% increased damage with all styles the lower the player's current life points are. This is really good because even if you don't keep your hit points super low, you aren't usually going to be on full health when bossing, and this relic will give you a continuous passive DPS boost. You'll need to combine a lock of hair with an amulet of the Forsaken, which will run you about 50 mil or so GP, but for such a low requirement and not too expensive of, of a cost, this is a great upgrade to get right away to passively increase your DPS. The next part of the best in-slot DPS relic combination is the Fury of the Small Relic, which lets all adrenaline generating basics generate 1% extra adrenaline. This is amazing and adds up so much when PVMing as you'll be gaining adrenaline at a faster rate, which will in turn increase your DPS. Of course, this one has a bit of steeper requirements, requiring level 97 archaeology, but it is pretty cheap and won't cost you much at all. I highly recommend, if anything, getting 56 archaeology and getting the Berserker's Fury Relic as it's so nice to stack passive DPS boosts and all these boosts like perks and archaeology relics will add up so much and you'll be dealing so much DPS without even trying. Alright guys, so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you can, please leave a like and hit that like button because it really helps get the video out to more people and I'm pretty proud of this video. Um, so I'd love the algorithm to uh, pick it up. So let's see how many likes we can get. Thank you guys so much for the support. Also subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, we're getting close to 6k subscribers, so that is crazy. That is a number I never thought I'd see. But I hope this video helps some of you out. Uh, I know my last DPS video did pretty well. So I'll link that uh, at the end here and in the description so you can go watch that if you haven't already. There's a lot of more general tips in there. Uh, not mostly focused on upgrades, more focused on like items that you can use and small little things to increase your DPS. But I think thought this was an interesting way to kind of show misconceptions people have when upgrading gear and how to get the right upgrade. So... Uh, thanks for watching guys i want to thank all my channel members again you guys are amazing uh, there will be a link in my description to a discord that's free to join um, if anybody wants to join we have a pretty cool community going in there so you can join that and if you'd like to join my channel memberships you can find info about that on the discord or you can click the link in the description um, or the join button on the screen now and you can support the channel and get a ton of cool perks so, so thanks for watching guys and uh, I will see you in the next video.